Welcome everybody to a very special report on the Chinese spy balloon. Today's a little bit different. We're going to be getting directly into the topic and we will do the normal, uh, you know, what's new and all that after the main topic, which is of course, the Chinese spy balloon that is currently flying over the United States of America. This is a... When I close my eyes, I can no more see it. So for those of you unaware, there is currently a spy balloon flying over Montana. Uh, let's take a quick look at some videos that people have been taking from the ground. That's um, no moon. No. They're like, what is this? Uh, commercial airline pilots were spotting this thing as well. And people were, were curious, what is this object flying in the sky, which looks like another planet or something? A lot of people were like, is this a planet? They didn't really know what it was about the size of three Greyhound buses. So yeah, it's three, massive. Three buses, very heavy surveillance or you know technological equipment hanging from the bottom of it. Yeah, and uh, it's go, it's currently at about 60,000 feet. Yeah. Which is about double what your you know passenger aircraft usually flies at. It's very high up. Yes. Um, and we're gonna discuss a lot about this balloon. We're gonna discuss um, why something like this is a danger and uh, dis also discuss the reaction that China's had to it and the reaction that um, the world's having to it as well. But it's currently over Missouri, by the way. Oh, it's over Missouri. Yeah. Sorry. It's, it was yesterday. Another end state. Yeah. <laughs> Here's the thing. Uh, before we even get into this, we have to explain something to you. And it's something in China called the military civil fusion. It's going to be really important to understand this. It's super important to understand this. Okay. So military civil fusion or MCF is an aggressive national strategy of the Chinese Communist Party. Its goal is to enable the PRC, which is the People's Republic of China, to develop the most technologically advanced military in the world. As the name suggests, a key part of MCF is the elimination of barriers between China's civilian research and commercial uh, sectors and its military and defense industrial sectors. Okay, now... I just wanted to say you might this is this is like perfectly in line with some stuff you might have been seeing coming out of the DOJ when mm -hmm. the key, FBI keeps making arrests of people like Chinese nationals that are stealing very sensitive technology yes. from the US. Very much in line with this. This is actually the program that China's employing. So um I can leave this up on the screen for a while, but the gist of this all, without reading the whole thing, is that um the Chinese government utilizes the civilian sector. Um in order to develop the military. So yes. any kind of research in the civilian sector is dual purpose. Yeah, that's okay? right. And any kind of intelligence gathered in the civilian sector is immediately um, implemented in the military. That's team. right. So uh, this is going to explain a lot when China came out to say it's just a civilian aircraft or a civilian you know, air balloon or whatever. You're right, because yeah. that just means it's the military, <laughs> Correct. China. So just remember that this is very important, this military-civil fusion. We'll get back to it later. Yeah, yeah. Something we've covered in the past. But we know there's probably a lot of you uh, pe that people have not been here before. I want to say welcome. Yeah. Um, yeah, we'll get into that a little bit later. Now, high-altitude surveillance balloons, how they work is, uh, here's a diagram over here. You've got a helium-filled balloon. You have solar panels, which obviously provide the power. And then you have your information package or your instrument package, which can consist of a number of different things. That's right. All right? Uh, since it is a surveillance um, balloon, suspected surveillance balloon, it's definitely going to have some very high resolution cameras in there, and it's going to have a lot of other equipment to intercept signals and things like that. And just uh, instruments to measure weather and whatever else it may. You can put anything you want in there. Yep. Now, you might be wondering, you know, why, why would anyone use such an outdated, ridiculous, uh, um, you know, balloon? Yes. You know, why not just use a satellite to get images from space? Yeah, because, I mean, they were using balloons back in the Cold War, mm -hmm. right? So this oh, is yeah. Old. I mean, the, the World War II, Japan tried to send balloons over, you know, to attack America. Dirt, with dirty bombs. Yeah, exactly. Weapons, yeah. Anyway, the fact of the matter is, is that um, you cannot, for instance, intercept radio signals with a satellite. When you've got a balloon floating in orbit like that, you can really intercept signals. You obviously are closer to the ground, so you can get better imagery with your higher resolution cameras than you can up there. But the, there are so many other things that you can measure. For instance, the air patterns. Yeah, the that's wind absolutely patterns. correct. 
Yeah. So, you know, so that you can test if you wanted to send over a payload of, yeah. I don't know, biological weapons or, or whatever. nuclear yeah. or anything you wanted or just, you know, to get into that airspace, you figure out all the air currents and so on yeah. that re to reach your destination. And you're also testing the response times. You're yeah. testing the kind of response you'll get from this sort of thing. There's all sorts of advantages to using a balloon. Now, uh, here we actually have a meteorologist who uh, ran a sort of a, a prediction of where it came from using mm. all the you know, weather routes and everything. And it does, in fact, originate from China, central yeah, China. That's right. Yeah. Um, there's some key features here. Mm -hmm. uh, there was a press conference with a senior defense official. Mm -hmm. And it was noted that during the press conference that Montana, specifically the, near the area where it was fly, the balloon is flying over, is home to the Maelstrom Air Force Base with well over 100 silos of Minutemen intercontinental ballistic missiles. Yeah, Minutemen 3s, Minute 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 right? Minutemen 3s, right? Yeah. So... There is a reason that this was, people were, were feeling a lot really weird about this is yes, it's old tech. Yes, it's a balloon, but it was lingering over these sensitive areas. And that's what got the attention of these officials, right? And I just wanted to give another, a, a little quick little note on why, you know, using a balloon, although archaic, would be mm -hmm. used today in 2023. Yeah. And you mentioned uh, radio signals as mm -hmm. well as weather patterns. Um, also airborne sensors, right? Yeah. And deep ground penetrating radar is very limited from satellites, whereas balloons can do a lot more. But sure. one of the biggest key features of this is that using old tech sometimes makes a lot of sense in today's day and age because of the reduction in size of technology, right? Yeah. So a balloon can carry up an, an insane technological package. Correct. And it's cost effective. It can mm -hmm. slip under the radar. It's got no emissions, yeah. right? All of these features mean that you can resurrect ancient tech to really... <laughs> kind of bolster your surveillance and use really high-tech stuff in a tiny little package. Yeah, we're right. also going to explain to you, we're going to look at the responses from China and yeah. how they tried to hide it, but we're going to um, also just explain to you after you know we, we get into this just how ridiculous all of this is and just how impossible it is that it, this is just a civilian air balloon gone, gone astray. I think, again, the most important thing if you walk away from this video is you can go watch your news reports and you can watch all this stuff. We're mm. just going to have good information, good interviews with like generals and stuff. The most important thing you're going to get here is a succinct reason as to why they're doing this. But most importantly, you'll walk away from this episode knowing why China did this yes. and why it's super suspicious because when we analyze their Chinese versus their English language responses, mm -hmm. official versus unofficial, it gets really, really weird. Yeah, of and course. that's that's what we did. Yeah, correct. Anyway, um, now before we continue, uh, of course, with the responses, we're going to tell you how China responded, and we're going to tell you how the propagandists responded. We first have to give you a little word from our sponsor, so please bear with us. Today's video is brought to you by Guardio. Guardio is the first line of defense. I don't know about you guys, but we really need to be careful when we're online. It's an awesome extension that you put on your browser and it actually detects threats before they even reach them. I've gotten all kinds of dodgy weird emails and Guardio helped keep me safe by blocking those malicious attacks. How does it work? Well, all you gotta do is add the Guardio browser extension from the Chrome or Edge store. You install it, you get a free security scan. After starting to use Guardio, we had a massive wow moment when we noticed all of the malicious attacks that had been blocked. This is such a fantastic piece of software and it really wakes you up to what's going on out there. The most important thing is to keep your information secure, have real time protection and alerts, and you can start with a free security scan. It only takes 30 seconds. Over a million people, as featured on Google, have used it. Get Guardio now and protect your online browsing and information. Avoid installing malware and falling victim to scams and get real-time alerts when your information could be at risk. We trust Guardio and so should you. If you want a clean and secure browsing experience, go to guard.io slash the China show or click the link below in the description and secure your browsing today. You can also check out their very affordable premium plans. Not only will you be protecting your internet, but also you'll be supporting the channel. Okay, guys, so first of all, we have to look at the responses that we were getting from the usual crowd of um, CCP sympathizers and, um, you know, propagandists. So let me just set the scene. Mm -hmm. You guys turn on your TV, you're going on your Reddit, you're going on your news, right? And all of a sudden you see these headlines coming out. Yeah. You're like, 
Chinese spy balloon over the U.S., of course you're going to start to get a little interested, right? This is some old school Cold War era tactics. Sure. You're like, well, I mean, look, what's th- going on, right? To be honest, this is an absolute act of aggression. Yes. Why would China? How would China react if there was a U.S. spy plane or U.S. <laughs> spy balloon that flew into Chinese airspace, caught. and not just like on the outskirts? No. Like near Hainan or something, yeah, but yeah. actually into the center of sure. China. Because think about it, Montana, uh, all these places that this balloon has been over yeah. is in the middle of the country. Yeah. And it's over sensitive sites. Yes. You know, so if you flew a balloon over uh, Beijing or a big military base in China, there would have been an uproar. Chinese state media would have gone ape. Everybody They would have gotten all of their paid misinformation, misinformation agents out to go out and talk about it, right? Yes. So we're looking at a situation where Winston and I were first alerted with this, and we wanted to go check what was the official narrative from Beijing, and what did they tell their shills to go do? Yeah. We, we call them shills. They're basically people that are either paid or incentivized to work on behalf of China or Beijing's narrative, yeah. right, to go put it out there. Think of, think of like uh, agents, like disinformation agents from the Soviet Union. It's kind yeah. of like those. Tactics. So we thought we'd read you a couple of the the immediate like knee jerk reactions that we got mm. from the, mm. the 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 sycophants and the sympathizers. For instance, uh, people saying, "Saw this on the news today, and I laughed." Damn, how stupid can one be to believe China sends a balloon to fly over the Pacific Ocean to America to steal info? Come on, we have satellites in space and a space station. Also, how do you identify it's Chinese and? Other people's like, that's what I find most reprehensible. They print what is a Pentagon talking point, suspected Chinese spy balloon, and literally none of them question it with basic common sense, as in, why would China use 19th century technology to spy on us? Well, we've already like explained that. There was a concerted effort right out the gates, and I found this very interesting from someone that, what you know, as China watchers, we watch how they change and morph their propaganda. Yeah. And one constant theme I saw over and over again was, how stupid do you have to be to believe that this is a Chinese spy yeah. balloon? How stupid are you? You should read this quote, do this and this and this. And to make you doubt and be like, oh, am I am I dumb here? Yeah. Am, maybe I'm, I believe fake news? Yeah. Right? I mean, that was the idea. Yeah, let's continue. There's a couple more here. Yeah. This story seems hard, hard to believe. How on earth could China have a spy balloon over Montana? It would have had to travel across <laughs> Canada. Nothing from Canadians on this? How certain are we that this is even from China? Um, I just wanted to read a good response kind of to this. Okay. Um, in, in the military sphere, what people were discussing, which is kind of in direct response. Yeah. Um, it, you know, this person said, like, it, we probably knew about it as, as Americans or American yeah. intelligence um, since it hit the Aleutians, right? Yeah. But they wanted to keep it quiet and keep tabs on it without the Chinese knowing that we know. A commercial airliner happens to see it, goes viral, and we have to respond publicly. Yeah. If it doesn't come down uh, on its own in the U.S., it will surely hit a storm, which will not get down. Right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, and there also, there's a lot of information that can be gleaned from this. You can study what type of sensor, what frequency it reports on, what type mm-hmm. of encryption it's using, what's the control node. All these opportunities is the reason you're not shooting it down. I wanted to address a lot of the people in chat right now. Mm. That's why you're not shooting it down. Oh, yeah. You can study from it. You can learn more than what it was sent to do. Oh, right? yeah. We're going to get into the whole SIGINT Yes, yeah. but I'd even say sig, sig int. I yeah. just wanted to go mm-hmm. and use this as an opportunity. This is clear propaganda. Um, I just wanted, uh, I wanted you guys to know there is a proper response to all this stuff. Yeah. Right? Anyway, as usual, let's continue with some of the immediate uh, kind of defenses. And these are not even that immediate. Some of these were as, as, as recent as like three or four hours ago. Yeah. Okay. So, for instance, truth. Wait, I got to get the right accent. Truth. It is not a Chinese spy balloon flying over the US, it's a lie. To start promote war with China amongst the American people, don't fall for this games. Stay awake. Spot on, because you're South African, you can do your native accent very well. Yeah, well, I mean that's you can not, turn it on. It's kind that's of my Afrikaans. Yeah. yeah, I can for like to be wearing a jean pant on a Friday. <laughs> but anyway, like seriously, that's you know, Kabotirki over here trying to say that it's not a Chinese spy balloon and it's like an American conspiracy to start a war. Yeah. Somebody, right. s- somebody send us these. We we're very not shocked to see all of these tweets that people were sending us from the Chinese shills, like yeah. the CCP Chinese government shills. We're spot on with what we thought they would say. Yeah. <laughs> Communist ne- Leprechaun says, has anyone stopped to wonder why Xi Jinping commanded command his people to make the spy balloon white so it would be visible from the ground to the naked eye? 
This guy doesn't know a lot about these kind of balloons. That's kind of the color that they are uh, for a reason. Go look well, into again, the science. Again, it's, it's meant all the... Do you see a trend in this propaganda? Yeah. You're stupid because you didn't think about this. I'm big brain. I'm smart. You don't want it to be black because then it'll expand from the, the, from the, the heat, the, the heat, the sun and yeah. all that. You know what I mean? Anyway, um, that was like only four hours ago that that was posted. Danny I'm Wrong says, Chinese balloons are spying on Americans. Oops, that's the U.S. government tapping into your phone. Chinese tech companies are spying on Americans. Oops, that's U.S. tech companies stealing your data to the government, selling your data to the government. The new McCarthyism is a blend of absurdity and projection. Again. This is a, a bit of a morph, too. This is whataboutism here. I like to see a little sprinkle of whataboutism, which is interesting because you had... You're mm -hmm. dumb. You didn't think about this. How dumb is it for China to do that? They'll never do that, right? You're just stupid. You didn't realize yeah. that. Then you have some whataboutism sprinkled in. Mm -hmm. But then you also have your little bit of racism and hatred thrown in there. Sure, right? sure. Yeah, it's racist to say that it's a spy balloon now. Yeah, yeah, you get that. Yeah, <laughs> there's too. a lot of that too. Um, Diabetic Mao over here says, don't mind me just passing through. Boy, Montana sure is beautiful this time of year. They're just kind of making fun of it, saying, Again, oh, it's, it's so just, absurd that yeah, China would try to How fly would you a believe yeah. such a dumb thing? Yeah, you know? exactly. Um, then Hu Jin, who used, is very well known. State affiliate media. Yeah, yeah, of course. He is China State Affiliated Media. He used to be the editor of the Global Times, um, of course. He's been putting out a whole bunch of tweets. So he's, you know, Chinese government here. Yeah. Says the media directly labeled it as a Chinese spy balloon. Though the Pentagon didn't say so, the Pentagon has left more room for smears to media and members of Congress. The U.S. attacks against China has been systemat uh, systematic. The balloon is now a live target for U.S., to incite anti-China hatred. Did I call it? Did I call yeah. it? Ladies and gentlemen, we've covered everything. The balloon is in China. Uh, there's, you don't yeah. be ridiculous. Even if it was from China, it's not a spy balloon. Mm -hmm. You are, this is just to spread McCarthyism and anti-communism. Don't fall for this Pentagon trick. Mm -hmm. And it's anti-China hatred now yes. to call it a spy balloon. Yeah, exactly. We've come full circle, guys. We've we hit all the bases. Yeah, it's ridiculous. Anyway, good old Hu Jin over here. Um, one thing he doesn't realize is that people can still read his Chinese Weibo account. This is what's so stupid. Yeah. CCP, again, I always uh, have a little, you know, I talk to them directly because they're all watching. By the way, I checked our analytics and there's like 700 Chinese mainland China IP addresses that watch our videos. Mm. So you can't do that without a VPN. And sure. There's no China VPN. Yep. So there's people in Beijing analyzing this. I'm talking to you guys. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to give you tips. But what I'm going to say is that it's really stupid to over and over again say something on the, the Western side of the internet where English speakers, or any English speaker, I should yeah. say, English speaking internet, where people could read, and then say the opposite or different things on the Chinese internet, because there's bilingual people in this world. Yeah. They exist. Continue. Anyway, so he, he's saying at the same time on his Chinese web, well, the communist China doesn't have to use balloons to gather the intel from the United States. Like, we can just use other stuff. Like, yeah. you know. Yeah. <laughs> Absolute nonsense, conflicting yes. shit. But the whole point is that everyone is trying to say this balloon is not from China or, you know, that kind of nonsense, right? Yeah. Then um, this is something you found yesterday, and I'd like you to explain this very succinctly what's happening here on Reddit. When yes. this story was being shared yesterday, you could see on World News, which is the biggest like news yes. Reddit sub subreddit, right? World News is under attack. Dude. Yeah. So... Here's the headline that was shared. This was, um, um, I don't know, if, what was it, NBC News or something? But uh, it's MSNBC it. or something. Okay. Yeah. It says, suspected Chinese NBC. spy balloon found over northern U.S. That's the headline. Yeah, for okay? NBC, you're right, NBC News. So this is what happened. Mm -hmm. And I did a, a bit of an analysis. I wanted to see, as soon as this broke, what their, the deception techniques would be. Yeah. And it kind of lines up with what you just showed us with the, you know, the CCP shill types. Yeah. It's this idea that if you put something out there, you can trick a certain percentage of people to believe that it was fake. Yeah. So what we saw here, and this is a great example. You see that, what's the headline? It says, suspected Chinese spy balloon found over northern US, right? Yes. NBC News. You go out there. Maybe you're not going to read the article. You just read through the comments. Yeah, quickly. you read the you headline and you, you, you just look at it. Let's see what comments. other people are saying yeah. about it, right? Yeah. You go down and you look at it, it says nothing. The headline is misleading. The last part of the article reveals that they don't even think it's a spy balloon, right? And you know what's crazy about this? And then it's so yeah. sinister. This copy pasta, right? Yeah, here. so they paste then yeah. they paste what you think is something from the article. Yeah, you're like, because you didn't bother to read it, right? Yeah. You're like, okay, let's see what the, the military experts view. 
And then it goes through and talks about how it's probably not a spy balloon, right? Mm -hmm. It says, another case of Redditors reading the headline, but not the article, but they made me click and got that ad revenue. So let's say a good chunk of people read mm -hmm. that comment. They go, okay, I don't need to read the article. Now Now I know that it's probably not a, 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 a spy balloon from China, yeah. right? And it's just a misleading headline. Yeah. Look over here. If you had actually clicked the link, you would know that this is not from the article that OP posted. Yeah. It's from a copy pasta article floating around. You done goofed by calling people for not clicking, man. But what he doesn't realize is this is very common mm -hmm. in both Chinese and Russian propaganda. Yeah. It's to prey on people that didn't go through the effort to read the article. Because why in God's name mm -hmm. would somebody go out of their way to put a misquoted thing about an article? You're, of course, you're just going to believe someone. It's like a quote, yeah. right? Here is an article. They said this and this and this. You're not going to instinctively not trust that. Correct. Right? This is the kind of really crazy yeah, I mean, shift just, just in propaganda we've seen. Super simplify this. Imagine there's a headline to an article that says, um, you know, drought in Texas. Yes. Okay. And then somebody, but and the article de details that there's a massive drought. But somebody says, why do you even believe the headline? Because in the article, it says that there's huge amounts of rain and actually yeah. flooding in Texas. And then they paste There was like a drought, something. but it's done. Yeah, yeah, and they paste something um, in there like that looks like it comes from the article. Yeah. So people that see the headline, then they read that comment. They don't even read the article. And then yes. they walk away thinking, yes. actually, there are floods. And it's, not a drop. it's so so it's sinister, real psyop stuff it's mad psyop stuff yeah and this is the kind of stuff we're dealing with right now yeah um, but it was interesting because we like to see beijing's response and we like to see how it trickles down yeah and we've noticed beijing used to you know they used to be really direct and like no that's wrong or no we didn't do it now yeah. they they kind of employ this kind of like they don't care if you catch them out in their lies because mm -hmm. they have five other lies to look at too. So right? now, now we've seen the kind of unofficial, yeah. the tweets, the the we did see actual official Hu Shijin is yeah. state media. But let's look at the China Daily, and this this article was even updated today, and they have a, an uh, an article that they put out which says time to prick spy balloon trick. <laughs> okay. It's an interesting headline, China Daily. So they got these so-called experts, okay? They got four of them here. This is pretty fascinating. And now this is Chinese official state media, yeah. China Daily, okay? Don't get more official than this. Nope. And they they put out, they got these experts to say, you know, what's going on with yeah. this balloon. So um, the first guy says, more of a political balloon. This morning, Fox News said that it suspected Chinese spy balloon was hovering over Montana where there are sensitive U.S. ballistic missile assets. CNN has posted the same story, saying that the Pentagon has full custody of the suspected Chinese surveillance balloon and that we have communicated the seriousness uh, with uh, which we take this issue. Okay, yeah. So far, this story has been catchy enough to get retired generals and patriotic young, young men in the U.S. interested. However, it seems to me that this is not a media event, but rather a political balloon from Washington to maneuver the domestic audience before U.S. Secretary of State Anthony Blinken arrives on his widely expected first visit to China. So so just b before you continue. Yeah. So what he's saying is despite the spy balloon mm -hmm. flying over the U.S. Yes. And people reporting on it from both liberal and conservative media. Mm hmm it's not real. No, it's a it's U.S. A political, tactic. The U.S. made the balloon now. Yeah. Um, anyway, let's move on to the next one because you, you get the idea. Um, yeah, these are the four expert opinions, and this is what they rushed out. Yeah. This is Chinese, again, Chinese. Yeah, you theory. can read the rest on the screen. Let's get to the second one. The, the others aren't as long as this. Second of one. Of course, by the way, that sums up by saying the people that are profiting from Sino-U.S. problems. Yes, uh, You know, yes, you got to yes. throw the hatred in there, anti-China hatred. Yeah. Uh, the next one is just a trick to defame China. Defame it. In an era full of advanced technologies, including man-made satellites, common sense and a professional perspective will tell you that anyone that a spy balloon is a ridiculous assumption. The Pentagon's accusation is nothing but a story to play up the China threat theory. Is this not right mm -hmm. in line? The beautiful in line with the, the foreign shill exactly. propaganda? Exactly. Ratcheting up tensions with China is a card that the U.S. has played to add bargaining chips before U.S. Secretary of State Anthony Blinken's widely expected visit to China and a popular tactic of the U.S. government for benefits. The U.S. still adopts a Cold War mentality against China. Why is China using Cold War like spy technology? I don't know. They're but talking about Cold War. You know what's funny? Can what? I just say something real quick? Sure. Chat just erupted yep. with 
Russia and China propaganda of just course. erupted. If you see any domestic politics debate and stuff, keep an eye. What they're trying to do is get you to not pay attention to the story. Mm-hmm. So just listen yeah, to Winston. Listen to us, yeah. Washington has established alliances such as the AUKUS to contain China, and the China threat theory was used to excuse um, enhanced U.S. centered alliances. Besides, U.S. intelligence agencies need foreign threats, real or made up, to benefit from. But the Biden administration should realize that China bashing is akin to playing with fire. The tactics to win support at home by inciting hatred will also make the U.S. society more divided. This is the biggest load of projection, projection you I've seen in a long time. China For always real. needs a foreign threat, real or made up. That is the <laughs> thing. I read this amazing thing. I wish we included this. Yeah. From a Chinese netizen. Mm-hmm. It is the most succinct. You have to be a Chinese reader to pick up on the nuances of it. Mm-hmm. But really to sum it up, it was like, I learned to hate the West. I learned to hate all these countries. I learned that the enemy was Japan and America and all these, all these things, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. And I learned this all my life, and I learned to hate and hate and hate. And why does China always need to have this enemy, an enemy, enemy? Yeah. Everyone's always anti-China, anti-China, anti-China. They're trying to take us down, bring us yeah, down, yeah. all this kind of stuff. And in the end, I realized that China's the only country that's doing this. Yeah. They're the ones that are projecting that actually we are the enemy to everybody. They're yeah. making us the enemy. It's not our fault as normal people, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Chinese people are not guilty of their, their the crimes of their government. They're Absolutely separated not. from this. But that's what the government is doing, yeah. right? They make constant xenophobic propaganda and shove it down the throats of everyone in China. We lived there over a decade, we know. Mm -hmm. And they really ramped it up recently. It's crazy. But I mean, again, that last opinion we looked at, they were trying to say that the US manufactured the spy balloon coming into America. Right. Here's another one. No evidence, no accusation. Remember that part. That's very important for later. The US should carefully examine who the balloon belongs to and refrain from accusing China without sufficient evidence. Yes. Remember, guys, this is in China state media, China Daily. Back in 2013, former NSA contractor and whistleblower Edward Snowden had exposed that the U.S. prison surveillance program had spied on its own citizens and European officials and a number of world leaders. What the hell does that even have to do with their spy balloon? With Blinken's upcoming visit, the U.S. politicians should be cautious in their words and actions. Hope the balloon case indicates the U.S. is willing to communicate with China on this issue. Communication should continue, but the farce should stop. It's so almost offensive. Yeah, <laughs> by, by the way, here. like all these people that they're that are giving these yeah. opinions are experts. Like this guy is Fudan Sean Ding Lee from Fudan University. <laughs> yeah. You know, he's the dean of uh, the Institute of in International. Line. You'll be studies. literally in line with the, the Chinese government's... All of them are like, you know, experts. And I think there's one more. Is there one more? Let's take a look. Yeah, one more. Accusation not credible. Um, let's see. Is this the most important one that will Maybe. be able to disprove with its let's own media? Let's take a look. <laughs> Although some Pentagon officials claim that they have confirmed the spy balloon belongs to China, doubts persist. As we all know, satellite reconnaissance technology has made great progress in recent years. It's hard to imagine any big country in the world will be clumsy enough to rush spy balloons into the airspace of other countries when it owns reconnaissance satellites. Mm. What's more, it's too early to judge whether the balloon is for military or meteorological observation purpose, or if it was a scientific research balloon that lost its way. The US government hyped up the Chinese spy balloon without uh, threat without fully gathering relevant information. This will only aggravate the US citizens' aversion for and distrust of China. This is not only irresponsible, but also conducive to the improvement and development of Sino US relations. All right. So let's get down to the real uh, meat and potatoes of all of this. Okay. What is the actual deal with this bloody satellite? Well, it turns out China admits claim. That it was theirs. Yes. So you have to go through here and realize how the Chinese propaganda machine works. Yes. It doesn't care that it was wrong and sent all its agents out and even had official state media go out mm-hmm. and say, hey, They're it's like, not Oh, yeah, balloon. how dare you accuse China of this balloon? Right. You don't know it's from China, blah, right. blah, blah. But then officially from the China Chinese government, they have admitted this comes from China. So you, it's just like, what's a great analogy is COVID, right? Sure. You go out, they go out there and say, first of all, COVID doesn't exist. We'll put you in jail if you even say it. Yeah. Right. Then they're like, okay, COVID does exist. Right. Mm -hmm. And it came and it comes from Wuhan, but it's just Wuhan. We're going to close it off. Right. Right. Then they're like, wait a minute. 
COVID exists, but it didn't come from even China. No. It came from America, yeah. right? You see how they change? Yeah. They make shit up as they go along. This is the MO of China. And this is why no one in 2023, no diplomatic country that is trying to interface with countries around the world should be taking China seriously under the current government. Yes. This is its behavior. It lies, lies, and lies. Yeah, it does. And then finally, this is the Chinese state-affiliated uh, media. This is Chinese state uh, said... Um, and shared the actual Ministry of Foreign Affairs press release and said, The airship is from China. It is a civilian airship used for research, mainly meteorological purposes, affected by the westerlies, and with limited self-steering capability, the airship deviated far from its planned course. The Chinese side regrets the unintended entry of the... And then he continues to basically read what they said. He's just quoting the article. Okay, now... Before we even get into this whole like, oh, is it a civilian um, airship or anything like that, right? Because, um, oh yeah, I'll just finish reading that. It's like, yeah, sure. regrets the unintended entry of the airship into the U.S. airspace due to force majeure. However you say that. I'm not French. The Chinese side will continue communicating with the U.S. side and properly handle this unexpected situation caused by force majeure. How do you say force majeure? Is that correct? Majeure. Majeure. I don't know. Ho, ho, ho. I don't know do I look bread? No. Yeah. I mean, if you did, you'd cook really well, though. Let's move on. Here's the bullshit story. Okay. <laughs> yeah. If this was a civilian thing gone awry. Because keep in mind, that's the official response. Yeah. So let's just say the Chinese government knows that they have this civilian balloon the size of three Greyhound buses. It's gone awry. It's like gone off course now. Oh, no, we can't steer it. Oh, no, look. Oh, it just happens to be flying over Canada and it's about to fly <laughs> over America. Oh, no. Wouldn't you call? Wouldn't you call? Wouldn't you call and say, listen up, Washington, yeah. D.C. This is not we, surveillance. Yeah, we have a balloon that's yeah. gone off course. There's nothing we can do. It's yeah. screwed up. Um, do we, what you yeah, mean. Do, do what you We don't want to like cause a panic here. Yeah. We're not trying to spy on you. We're not trying. Like, this is a mistake. Wouldn't you do that? You would do that. You that would, would be common that. practice, even amongst countries that are not super friendly with each other. Yeah. You wouldn't be like, oh, shit, look, it's gone off course. <laughs> oh, it just happens to have gone off course over some very like sensitive, sensitive missile areas. silos and, hover. <laughs> and hovered and moved around. Yeah, it just happened to have Quote, gone off course. Clearly, they're trying to fly over sensitive sites. <laughs> yes. Yeah, they are. So it's like, let it fly over those sensitive sites. And hey, we'll just keep quiet about it. You know, maybe, yes. maybe if they like say anything, then we'll be like, we'll start pulling out that, oh, it just went off course nonsense. Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. Uh, but it gets better it than gets that. It gets way better than that. Okay. This so, is going to be the part where the CCP over goes overdrive with the disinfo in the chat because they're not going to like this. No, they won't like it at all. Um, give it a second. Anyone who's lived in China, and this is why we can speak with authority, anyone who's lived in China knows that when you take a domestic flight, it will be delayed. Yep. Okay. And it's like, horrible. It's Almost guaranteed that your flight yes. will be delayed. Yes. Okay, and there's a reason for this. Okay. Um, there are 23 restricted areas. Uh, aircraft are not allowed to enter or cross 23 restricted areas. And sorry, no, the yeah. And 176 prohibited areas. Basically, this is a map of China. Chinese airspace. Over 80% of Chinese airspace is military controlled airspace. Okay. Yep. What that equals is, and I'll bring up another thing for you here, is a situation where um, there's very limited airspace for civilian aircraft. That's why you get so many delays, because what happens is there are zones which you just cannot fly over yep. at all. But then there are zones. Blackout zones. Yeah, exactly. But remember, 80% of the whole airspace is military control. Yep. That doesn't mean that 80% can't be used. There are areas that are military airspace, but the civilian airline needs permission to fly through There's it. There's a good, uh, not an analogy, a good example. Yeah. The airport where I lived, yeah. literally you had to go through two military checkpoints and it yeah. was just a civilian, it was just to fly a, a plane. It's just because the, the PLA also yeah. flies out of there, the plaf. Yeah, so basically um, it... It's never a certain thing. So what happens is if there's a flight that needs to fly, mm -hmm. they first have to okay it with the yep. military. And the military will be like, no, right now we're doing military exercises or no, right now we're that airspace. On doing it. <laughs> yeah, this airspace is closed for whatever yeah. reason. Then they have to divert and they have the real to, dicks about it. Yeah. And as you can see, there's a very set path that uh, planes are allowed to take. Yep. And because you've got these limited corridors, there's like a waiting queue for the planes to go through. Yep. Okay. So I'm getting to my point here in a minute. So remember, like eight, between 80 to 90% of 
The Chinese airspace is military airspace. Correct. Okay. So here's just a little interesting thing. In 2016, Chinese airport punctuality put it amongst the 20 worst airports in the world. Hangzhou with the worst Chinese on-time performance of 41%. So only 41%. It's this is 2016. so bad. It's gotten worse. It yeah, was yeah. always really bad. Yeah. So only 40, that's less than half. Are on time. Of flights are on time because of For this, right? Airplanes. And you can compare it to Haneda, the busiest uh, airport in Tokyo, had an on-time performance of 92%. Okay? Over 90%. Yeah, over, <laughs> over 90%. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, Anyway, the, the whole reason for this is because a large number of the military areas uh, block more than 70% of China Eastern's uh, airspace. You know, China Eastern is one of yep. their airlines. So um, let's take another look. If you look at these maps, which are showing, we take a look at Dan, the weatherman, or whatever his name was, the weatherman guy, the meteorologist who put together that uh, flight path where it came from. Which you can e easily do if you know, you know wind patterns. Yeah, I mean, he, he is a meteorologist. That's his this job. is his job. I turned it around so that we can actually see what it looks like. Yeah. So there you can see a side by side of where the balloon originated in China. Sorry, up there. Mm -hmm. And you can take a look at the Chinese um, kind of airspace. Those black areas are the completely restricted. You may you, not fly you, over. You, you cannot go. You go in down if yeah, you're flying. You may that. not fly over. So you're saying that this civilian balloon. Yeah flew across all of these restricted air zones in China through China's 90, 90 percent. <laughs> 80, yeah. 80, yeah, 80, yeah. 80 to 90 percent uh, military controlled airspace. Yeah. This civilian yeah. balloon yeah. was just allowed to fly through the entire country, like more than half the country. Yes. And look at the path it took through some massive, like really important areas. It flew down there past South Korea as well. Yeah. Okay. Over Japan, yep. Okay, this piece of shit balloon. Yeah, you're telling me that this piece of shit balloon, that's a civilian aircraft that just kind of went out of control, was allowed to fly through all of this restricted airspace in China? That's bullshit. Absolutely not. And that's that's the thing. We watched them say, "No, it's not ours." Yeah. No, it's not a surveillance craft. Uh -huh. Okay, it's ours. Okay, it was just a civilian <laughs> aircraft, but it, you know, it was just an accident. We didn't know about it. Yeah. And you managed to try to pull the wool over the eyes of the entire world when it's just right there. We have the path. As an avid drone pilot in China, I often would run into situations where I couldn't fly my drone because of military controlled yep. airspace. All just, the time. You know what I mean? I, that ties into how I actually left China, which yeah. I can tell you another time if you're not familiar with my story, but it is very, very sensitive. Yeah. Yeah. So if there's a massive balloon the size of three Greyhound buses floating through restricted military Guys, zones in China. We had the PLA <laughs> yeah. take apart our drones and batteries and line us up on a car and take our photo to surveil us for days on end because we had a drone that we were using to film camels. Yes, in Inner Mongolia. In Inner Mongolia. Where there's nothing. Where there's nothing there, right? Mm. So you got to understand the perspective here. Yeah. China knew there was a freaking balloon the size of three Greyhound buses going over 80 to 90% of its restricted airspace. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So it's definitely military. If it was yes. if it was a civilian balloon, it would it's have been- It's common sense. It would have been shut sense. down. It would have been taken down. Yeah. It would have been stopped. But no, not only was it not stopped and allowed to fly through the, all this restricted airspace and all this bullshit in China, but it was also allowed to go and fly over Japan. Yeah, Japanese people were seeing it, right? Yeah, yeah. well, apparently. And apparently. Fly, flying over Canada, by the way, Canada, and this is unconfirmed as of yet, but Canada has apparently spotted a second balloon, which they're monitoring right now. Yes, that's important. This yeah. is part of the breaking story is that and, we're not, it's not confirmed, but it's yeah. suspected. And it, it, could, it could be the same one, but they've also summoned like the Chinese ambassadors to ask why this has happened because it flew over canada too yeah yeah, for sure okay i want to ask you a question yeah so we went through a lot of these notes and stuff and we, we understand why it's not been shot down there's a lot of there's going to be intelligence calculations yeah. military calculations all this kind of stuff what yeah. i want to ask you is when this is you know the balloon's been obtained or there's some information that's been gleaned off of it right from yeah. u.s intelligence and then they make some sort of statement to the public and they say yeah, actually, we can confirm like our previous suspicions. You know, let's just say hypothetically this happens that this was a Chinese military balloon. Spy, spy balloon, balloon right? yeah. What does China say in response to that? 
They'll just say that, oh, no, it was a weather balloon, but, you know, it has all this high surveillance equipment on it because we wanted to test it. And, oh, we couldn't turn it off, so it just kept <laughs> taking photos of your missiles and stuff. Right. Missiles. What if, what if <laughs> you're looking at that and you're, yeah. they're like, well, there's actual, like, there's hard evidence on this in, in, intelligence package that's hanging oh. from it, the payload, that it wasn't just for weather. It was for, you know, spying on missile silos, Right. What, how do you say that that's just a weather balloon then? What the official response, what I think is going to happen, yeah, is the English response will be like, that's lies, whatever, you know, it's not true. You're just listening to fake news from the, from the Pentagon, yeah. And then on the Chinese side, they'll, they'll be like, huh, we got all this we, great we data, got all this great yeah, stuff. yeah, we found out everything we wanted to know <laughs> yeah, on this. Then, like, thank you to the civilians participating in our great civilian military operation. Yeah. I did want to talk about the American response to this threat. Mm. Okay. Now, I'm fairly sure that they knew about it, like you said earlier, you know, way, way before anyone was yes. alerted to yes. the fact, because that's usually the way these yeah. things go. Mm -hmm. um, but one thing that they did do, of course, is while it was over Montana, is they scrambled some F-22s yeah. to intercept. And right. I actually listened to the radio chatter uh, of the refueling aircraft going to refuel the Raptors and so on. Okay. And... There is something that they are definitely doing, and it's called signals intelligence, Signet. You see, if you shot it down um, and you just blow it up or whatever, they kept saying, like, oh, the reason they don't want to shoot it down, they're concerned about civilian casualties on the ground. I don't know, man. Like, Montana's a big state, a balloon falling off the sky. Yeah, it's got a payload. That might hurt someone. That might kill someone. But I have a feeling, like, it's not going to be that bad. I already, um, I already read the, the theories. It's, it makes a lot of sense to me. Yeah. yeah. But, There's a lot to learn. But, you know, the intercept packages that you have in these F-22s, they mm. should be able to do this uh, signal intelligence gathering. In other words, they'll be able to um, decode what it's doing from the signals it's submitting, where it's communicating to, how it's communicating, what, what, it, what instruments it's That's using, right. all that kind of thing. And you can do that without actually... Um, attacking it as long as you have it within range of mm. and not letting it get out, off course basically yeah. you yeah. can follow it around yeah it's easy enough mm. so i think this is going to um actually be a wealth of information yeah. that's very useful Could be a boon for the u.s yeah it, it's very useful to see what the chinese spy balloon is actually up to yeah um one other thing i forgot to throw in there was a, a the defense general right yeah. It could be scooping up sing signals uh, intelligence. In other words, they're looking out for cell phone traffic and radio traffic, right? Yeah. Which is, lines up with what we're talking about, the limitations of satellites versus yeah. balloons. Yeah, because right? you can't do that. Yeah. That's correct. So they'll be able to figure that out, you know? Yes. And um, Yeah, the whole shooting it down thing, like I get it. I understand that logic, but you have to understand there's a huge calculation to be made to make those decisions. And mm -hmm. then there's also too many advantages to... to, to that you're throwing away if you're doing that. You know what I mean? Yeah, it should be yeah. captured. Yes. So first you capture all the intelligence, intelligence you can in this passive way. Yeah. And then I presume that they'll find a way to bring it down safely over the sea or something and capture it. We'll, we'll be on top of this probably for the next couple of weeks, uh, depending mm -hmm. on what happens. Mm -hmm. uh, I'd love to see a response from U.S. officials to see what they've got off of it. It'll yeah. probably be a while. But I'm also, one thing you can count on us for is we're going to be watching very intently to see shifts in China policy. Because mm -hmm. really, the you know, a huge takeaway from this is that Blinken's trip yeah. is going to go have a, you know, a diplomatic trip with China has been canceled. It has been because canceled. Because of this. It should right? be canceled. Yes. And it absolutely, it was the correct move. Yeah. Um, not telling anyone how to do their job, obviously, but if it wasn't, I would be more concerned. <laughs> you know what I mean? I mean, we, we just, you just have to step back again, okay? Yeah. A surveillance balloon. Mm. It is a surveillance balloon. Yeah. It's got, it, that's what it's designed for, okay? Even if it's supposed to be a civilian airship, as they yes. say, it's got all the surveillance equipment on it for, even if it is just to sense weather patterns or whatever, it's still got equipment there to record information. Yes. So this balloon, it's not just a balloon. It's not just like a party balloon, like, yep. you know, it's being flown from China all the way to the USA without yes. a word being said from the Chinese government. That's the most absolutely concerning part. Absolutely aware that this thing yes. is flying through because they monitor their airspace so tightly. Yes, we know. That there is no way, like I said, I'm going to bring that, um, that little graph up that I made earlier again. There's absolutely no way that they would not know that this balloon flew over half the country. They knew. 
Yeah. They absolutely knew. Through it's all called their, being intentional. Yes. Through all of their restricted airspace, all of their military mm-hmm. airspace, it flew through all of that. Yes. It flew all the way into several and over several countries. Yes. <laughs> yes. Into several sovereign airspaces. Sovereign airspaces, yeah. Okay. It did all of this. So they didn't alert Japan. They didn't oh. alert Canada. They had many tries. Yeah. They didn't alert. It like skirted South Korea there. Yep. Um, they didn't alert. It even looks like it went over one of the islands there. Yep. Uh, they did not alert America, of course. Nope. Now, that shows intent to be sneaky yep. and underhanded, and it shows an intent to do surveillance and, and spy craft. Because, hey, if they could have gotten away with it yeah. and not mentioned it, they would have. So mm-hmm. I want to remind people that this is not... It is out of the ordinary, but it's not the first time that they've done this. No, it's okay. not. China's done this before, and mm-hmm. that's... Something that U.S. Def- uh, defense official was saying that the, the weird thing was is that this time, the reason that it's so alarming is that it's appearing to hang out for a longer period of time and it's more persistent than the previous instances. Yeah. That would be one distinguishing factor. So to have all this new tech on the balloon, much more powerful technology. So yeah. we, we, we can assume surveillance technology. Absolutely, right? yeah. Much more high-tech uh, payload package here. And then it's spending longer time trying to glean information what we suspect yeah. it's it's something to worry about you yeah. know it's just one of those things where we've never jumped on anything when we don't think it's not if something's not worth going into or it's being sensationalized or we can't prove something yeah we won't talk about it but this is one of those things that really it pricked our ears up mm. because this is it's in a sign of aggression from yeah. china and it's a sign of a new it's a sign of a new china policy to really just kind of give the middle finger Without any sense of repercussions. There's one other thing that I would like to quickly read. Um, sure. And I forgot to include it. I, I think I did. Let me just double check and make sure it's not in the um, uh, in here. Okay. No, it's not. Um, there is one thing here which I think is very important. Sure. It's the Global Times. China's uh, English state media. And this was released, uh, like I said, just a few hours ago. Sure. <clears throat> so this is after China admitted that this was a balloon from China. Yes. Yes, it's ours. They, they tweeted out from their official account said, recent signs sent from US on China have been utterly chaotic, which may bring more uncertainty to strained relations. Analysts urged US to be sincere in fixing relations with China instead of making provocative actions, especially amid the balloon stunt. That's, what are they saying? <laughs> And they, like, and they, their article is balloon stunt becomes latest chaotic signal sent from U.S. on China. You see this whole like, de- not dehumanizing, but belittling language, right? I said this. This is their tactic. You're yeah. you idiot. You don't yeah. understand this. Just a stunt. Yeah. Right. No, it's a big deal. Yeah, a little excerpt here. A spokesperson from the Chinese Foreign Ministry on Friday confirmed the balloon was an airship from China, but rejected the spy claim, saying that the civilian airship, used mainly for meteorological research purposes, deviated from its planned course after being affected by westerlies and due to its limited self-steering capability. Um, The Chinese side... Uh, sorry, the Chinese side regrets the unintended entry of the airship into the U.S. Yeah. space due to force majeure and will continue Very communicating bad, blah, 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 blah. Um, and then they go on about how, before the facts, the U.S. military and media accuse China of spying. Um, and this incident has brought the U.S. recent hyping of the China threat to a new level. And so they go on about how it's America's fault. Yes. It's America's fault that China sent... Just like America started COVID. Yeah. America, America's fault that China sent a spy balloon into sovereign airspace yes. over America. Yes. That's, what this the is hell? Where, this is where we're at. Because you're meant to be confused, yeah. thrown off target, and belittled. Yeah, so I just don't understand. It. It's just fake news, right? Yeah, it's bullshit. Like seriously, <laughs> you want to turn this around? Yeah, <laughs> you know, go like, for it. China's a face country, right? Yeah, your, your means. Yeah, if yeah. you deal with it, if you means like if you lost face, sure, it's the most important thing, and that's why the Chinese government can never be wrong. Yeah, but if you're claiming that it's a civilian balloon mm-hmm. and sorry it ended up in your airspace, we didn't know because of the winds. Then you just admitted that your air force. And your capability and radar to find this kind of stuff is broken and you can be invaded tomorrow. Yeah, you can track <laughs> you can your own freaking balloon. balloon. Sorry. 
Again, you know? uh, before we we wrap this this little segment up here, is we have to once again very important take a look at this. Now, um, I would like to see. I'm pretty sure I, I, you know, it's a bit tough for me to read there. There's a specific paragraph that I really, really, really want to read about this. Let me just find it over here. Military. You can find this very easily, by the way. Yes. Just search military civil uh, fusion. And what you're getting here is you're getting a U.S. Department of State PDF that they yeah, have online. Yeah, it's not opinion. This is yeah. the official report. Um, okay. I, I just do want to read through this now. Bear with me, guys, because this is so important for everyone to understand that China claiming it's civilian doesn't change anything. Yes. Okay. So why is um, MCF so important to the Chinese Communist Party? The CCP sees MCF as critical to advantage its regional and global ambitions. It believes that artificial intelligence will drive the next revolution in military affairs and that the first country to apply AI to next generation warfare will achieve military dominance. MCF aims to pave the way for for the PRC to be the first country to transition to intelligent warfare and therefore develop the military capabilities it sees critical to achieving these goals. What technologies are targeted under the military civil fusion. Key technologies being targeted, and pay attention here, um, under MCF include quantum computing, big data, semiconductors, 5G, advanced nuclear technology, aerospace technology, and AI. These weather balloons fit very, very neatly under the aerospace technology target of MCF. The PRC specifically seeks to exploit the inherent dual-use nature of many of these technologies, which have both military and civilian applications. How is the PRC targeting these technologies? The CCP is developing and acquiring key technologies through licit and illicit means. These include investment in private industries, talent recruitment programs, directing academic and uh, research collaboration to military gain, forced technology transfer, which is what they do with a lot of companies that get things made in China, intelligence gathering, and outright theft. The CCP's MCF strategy allows a growing number of civilian enterprises and entities to undertake classified military R&D and weapons production. The CCP also exploits the open and transparent nature of the global research enterprise to bolster its own military capabilities through bodies like the China Scholarship Council, which requires academic scholarship recipients to report on their overseas research to PRC diplomats. So finally, the final paragraph, why should we be concerned about MCF? MCF threatens the trust, transparency, and reciprocity and shared values that underpin international science and technology collaboration and fair global business practices. In a clandestine and non-transparent manner, the CCP is acquiring the intellectual property, key research, and technological advances of the world's citizens, researchers, scholars, and private industry in order to advance military aims. Mm -hmm. Joint research institutions, academia, and private firms are all being exploited to build the PLA's future military systems, often without their knowledge or consent. Doesn't this perfectly line up with that? Yeah. You know, like, why is everyone talking about how this is so outlandish and like, well, this is unprecedented and stuff. It's a big deal, but it's right in line with the military goals. And it yeah. it really trickles down to the craziest things, like my findings when I did the, the expose on the DNA testing companies, Yeah. where Americans and people abroad are sending their DNA information because they want to see their ancestry or their pregnancy data to labs in China, which are taking that DNA information. Yeah, or the, right? the pregnancy tests. The pregnancy tests, that's what I just said. Yeah, yeah. The pregnancy tests as well. They're, they're these companies that are doing that, and it's all part of the civil military fusion. It's how can we get information we could use to bolster our military from civilian projects? Yes. And it's very much in line with this, especially in their own language, saying it's a civilian operation, civilian balloon. Yeah, right? it's civilian aligned. balloon is bullshit. Well, it doesn't matter even if it was, right? And... I'm just going to be completely honest with you here. Anything that's got anything to do with flying in airspace in China cannot be civilian anyway. No. Okay? It has to be military. Yes. Anything that's tied to um, even telling the weather and stuff in China is going to be tied to the military Correct. anyway. Meteorological satellites and imagery and all that goes through China's military. It's going to be linked to the military. There is no civilian balloon club. <laughs> 
They don't have that. Dude, it's not. It's not. Don't talk shit about my civilian balloon club. I mean, club I mean civilian surveillance balloon club or civilian <laughs> meteorological balloon club. Yeah. No, it's let's not meet civilian. After school. <laughs> yeah, let's go launch like multi-million yes. dollar balloons with the, with tech packages. Yeah, though. exactly. That's our civilian thing that yes. we do. It's bullshit. It's military. You are being misled. Yes, it's military civil fusion. Yes. And again, this can also relate to things like TikTok. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Good analogy. Any, yeah, any of these things. It's oh, it's out there in the civilian, but you know how can we use this for military? Because that's how China works. Yes. The Chinese government is like anything that's civilian is yep. also military. It also belongs to the government. Correct. We can tap into it if it's got a military potential. Correct. Um, it's something to pay attention to. Anyway, uh, that more or less brings us to the end of our segment. But uh, we do now have to finish this segment off with something uh, very important. And uh, let me bring that up for you here. Let's get it in here. Yeah. And that is a word from our next sponsor. Most important, most important thing on a bike trip, beer. And the most important thing for a healthy lifestyle is a healthy diet. And that's why I'm proud to say this video is brought to you by Athletic Greens. I take AG1 by Athletic Greens literally every day, and originally I wanted to give it a try because I wanted better gut health, I wanted increased energy, I wanted immune system support, and I, I hate taking all these like 10 pounds of vitamins and pills and all these vegetables and stuff. It's so much more convenient to take AG1 in the morning before I even drink my coffee. It makes me feel amazing because I know I just did something really good for my body. It's got all the vitamins I need. It's got everything that my body craves throughout the day. Taking AG1 is so easy. It's the easiest thing you can do under a minute. It's one scoop of powder mixed with water once a day. And it's been part of millions of mornings since 2010. If you're looking for an easier way to take supplements, Athletic Greens is giving you a free one-year supply of vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. Go to athleticgreens.com slash ADV. That's athleticgreens.com slash ADV. Check it out. Can I read right. something? Can I read uh, something real quick? Yeah, go for it. What would you this like to read? Just from the chats from Molter, he says, one random U.S. citizen. I caught the spy balloon with my phone camera, CCP. Our entire military surveillance system failed to detect this one balloon. <laughs> That's actually, yeah, yeah. That's, uh, that's pretty good. Yeah. They're that lame. Yeah. Uh, anyway, now it's time to get back to our regular programming, everybody. So let's move into what's new, where we talk Woo. about what's new specifically with regards to China. And we also have to find out how good old Jeff is doing. Okay, guys, do you remember <laughs> when we exposed Lianghua Qingwen capsules? Yes. Uh, which are this, it's this bullshit medicine, Chinese medicine from China. Yeah. Um, that the government got into contract with to convince people it was a cure or a treatment for COVID. Yes. And they even got foreign shills. In, in on the action. Yeah, like they, but yeah. it's called Lianghua Qingwen, and they were like promoting this all over the place. And then they realized that a lot of countries like New Zealand and the US were putting restrictions on it because it had ephedra in it. Yeah. And then number two, it, you can't claim something as a cure for COVID. That's, no, you that's can't. just, that's can't. blatant medical misinformation, yeah. right? Which is dangerous, and especially during a pandemic, right? So, sure. As pill, these pills come out. Yeah. But we found this marketing campaign that they obviously never really pulled i guess to pull the trigger on mm -hmm. but this marketing oh they campaign, did no they just... did but it never took off right yeah so we found this treasure trove of these ads from mm. this chinese company which is government affiliated company in china yeah. trying to push these pills on other countries outside of china i mean we found marketing campaigns in kuwait we found <laughs> yes. marketing campaigns in russia all over the place, right? Yeah, Ukraine, everywhere. Ukraine, everywhere. Anyway, so... The Russian ones are really fun. We can't wait to do the Russian dude, ones. <laughs> it's basically dude. a zebra. Man. Yeah, it's bad. <laughs> it's so bad. <laughs> anyway, hmm. so we found uh, this one about Jeff, which actually just came out like a horror movie. It's this yeah. old man. He's like coughing. His wife tries to get him to take some pills. It's scary. Yeah, his ghost wife. His ghost wife. Mm. They try to make these elaborate storylines around these ads that make no sense. I mean, I feel like they're using Baidu Translate. Mm -hmm. I feel like there's people like completely out of touch, like the script writers. And these ads that are supposed to pull your heartstrings about, yes. you know, keep yourself protected. Take Lianghua Qingwen. You'll stay safe from COVID. Yeah. Just falls flat on its face and turns into like almost a bizarre avant-garde art project. Yeah. So let's, uh, let's take a, a look one. at this one. Okay. Found a new so. one. Here we got a lady sitting here and she's obviously a little under the weather. She's wearing a shawl, you yeah. know, yeah. and she's listening to some radio thing about Biden. There's always like anti-Biden, yeah. anti-America propaganda in these ads. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, I'll just rewind it a little bit so you can get the Biden thing. Sorry. 
Let's get past that. Let's listen. President Joe Biden used a primetime address to the nation on Thursday to lay out an encouragement. Hi, baby. I'll come back soon. Mom, I miss you. Yeah, okay. I mean, we should play it out. You want to play it out? Yeah. Okay, play it out. Me too, baby. <laughs> Love you, sweetie. Yeah, <laughs> okay. Oh, she's got a cold. Mm. I have a cold. <laughs> <laughs> so the little kid takes the phone and she's like, oh, you got a cold, mommy. I know what to do. And the Russian husband's you're, you're, like... <laughs> it's always a Russian. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. She like picks up a box of Lianhua Qingwen. What's she going to do with it? Mom, take it. <laughs> <laughs> they okay okay so the idea is that this chinese woman's abroad right yeah she got she's got no access to good medicine right yeah the russian husband's back in china yeah of course with the daughter and the the daughter tries to give her a liang Ching one through the screen take the peels yeah but by, by the way the, these characters all kind of connect you'll see it's crazy you know when i said it's an avant-garde art project yeah almost like a drama it, literally, they made summations where all the characters like meet each other and yeah. stuff. Yeah, it's yeah. like we'll, a whole story. We'll get onto this yeah. in future episodes, but yeah. So the little kid is like, "Oh, mommy, you're sick. I know what to do." Goes and grabs a box of Lianhua Chingwen and tries to feed her a pill through the phone. <laughs> okay, here, Love take and this. Love and be with each of your breath. Yeah, right. <laughs> all right, so we didn't want to do a little throwback. Yeah, okay, we did a little I thing. Mix it up a yeah. Little, yeah, let's see. How does this go? Jeff, you have a cold. I have a cold. Mom, take it. Jeff, <laughs> take the pills, Jeff. <laughs> hey, take this. Take it easy. I just got cold. Just working out. <laughs> <laughs> One of my favorites too. So he's yeah. Russians. So yeah. The, yeah, I mean, this whole weird—they they have these weird characters and storylines to try to promote these pills. That weightlifting one, by the way. If you guys missed that, yeah, play that again. I just want people to remember. It makes no sense. Yeah, we didn't cut that. It's like she's the, like the woman Take it coughs easy. and everyone kind of freaks out in the gym. Yeah, and so he throws her Lianhua Qingwen, which this. kind of makes sense. Right? Sure, yeah. I guess. You, you can have this. It, yeah. mm -hmm. Take it easy. I just got cold. I guess just her, working out. I guess her point is like, don't worry about it. I just have a cold. I don't need this. Yeah, it's not that bad. It's not that bad. But then he, I'm I'm just working out. Just like, working out. How is that a response? And that's not edited. It goes no. literally from take it easy, I just get cold to <laughs> just working out. <laughs> Smug dude. We love this beautiful disaster of a marriage between a Chinese state company, a medical company, and like some bizarre, almost like propaganda team trying to put like ads out for the with West. With Russian actors. With Russian actors. It's like the greatest marriage. Yeah. We it's, got I so much it. more. There's so much more and it becomes <laughs> a, a grand tale, really. Yeah. Yeah, it you does. Know. Anyway, um, <laughs> we're already Green starting to build. Yeah. <laughs> It is a green pill. Your green pill, bro. Yeah. That's um, some good art. Stuff yeah, some out. art's coming out of this whole spy balloon thing. I love this Winnie the Pooh um, spy balloon from China. The fact that they tried to deny it so hard in the I beginning. Know. And they, I not, would just not say anything if I was a CCP. Not, not only did they try to deny it, but they got all their shills to. You'd expect them yeah, to jump on that. Like, no way. China's yeah. never wrong. Not, China right. can never make a mistake. Sure. They jumping out. But then state media got like so called experts. Like, yes. University yes. professors and stuff yep. to go out there and say, like, no way, it's not, you know, like, it's just the U.S. trying to do stuff again. It's just... It was it, really piss poor. It's lame. Yeah, it's mad lame. But the, yeah. some of the sinister shit, like the, the Reddit thing, really freaked me out to see this kind of deception technique. Oh, yeah, it's you really know? ridiculous. There's one thing about saying, like, uh-uh, no, it's not, versus, like, no, let me, let me steer you off path on purpose. Oh, yeah. You know? It's ridiculous. It's scary. Again... Just shows how the, the Chinese government lies all the time. Yeah, it's it's a pathological liar. <laughs> nice. <laughs> uh, some technology times. Mm -hmm. um, big news. Sarah AI's grandfather is located. Official comments were declined, but it is possible they may just have needed batteries. Oh, yeah. Yeah, younger and beautiful. Um, I don't know if you guys, if you guys missed the last episode, it's very important. Uh, we quite literally 
exposed and ripped uh, to shreds <laughs> one of Huawei's uh, AI campaigns. Yeah, Ch China's biggest tech companies yeah. lying about its AI capabilities, and it's just worse it's than an Alexa or something. It's bullshit. It's all made up. And mm. again, great analogy. Everything that comes out of China these days, is, especially if it's a government initiative, it is fake. Yeah, correct. Oh, what else do we have and what's new today? Uh, this was just something that was kind of interesting that goes... It's only 3,000 votes, but it flies in the face of this idea that China... It kind of combats Chinese government propaganda. There was this... It's on Ask Middle East, so it's a, a subreddit for Middle Easterners, right? Yep. China's been promoting this idea that it's a dominant power. You'll see this in, in American shills, foreign shills that work for the CCP. Yeah. They'll say things like, the Middle East has shifted. They hate all you know, ideas of cooperating with anyone else. They want China. They want to cooperate with sure, China. Sure, and right? petrodollar and... All this kind of stuff. You'll see military just, they're industrial really driving at home, right? <laughs> sure. And, you know, by and large, the Middle East is going to be less apt to like the U.S., right? But yeah. when asked in this poll, which would you want to have as a dominant world superpower? The U.S. won with 1.1 1. 1, thousand votes in a Middle Eastern forum. Yeah. And China got 144 votes. China is not a dominant power. And actually... Something people need to understand when we need to humanize people in different countries because their actions of their government and their leaders are not representative of absolutely their non, I mean, non free countries. Look at like Pol Pot and yeah. you know, like the Khmer Rouge and stuff. Yes, look anywhere, look in Africa. Yeah, the governments suck, yeah, and the government by and large, yeah. they love being like you know, dictators and yeah. whatnot, and that's fine, but you can't say that the the people in whichever countries, like the Democratic yes. Republic, of course, Democratic, my ass. You know what I mean? <laughs> you have to like, say like, it. Yeah, <laughs> you know yeah, yeah you know it's not. <laughs> but I mean, like the people on the ground that actually have to suffer all these horrible civil wars and stuff, they don't agree with their dictator shit government. No, they make their lives worse. No, right? they hate that shit. So it's just, it it's not me. representative. It bothers me when these foreign propaganda, I say foreign, I'll just say Western, Western propagandists that work on behalf of the CCP push yeah. these narratives for the CCP, and it really... Mm -hmm. It's almost like uh, dehumanizing to these people of these yeah. countries, mm -hmm. right? That don't that don't like China's leadership. They don't want anything to do with it. Yeah, they don't yeah. like the the Chinese Belt and Road yes. initiative. The they don't government, want it. The government officials love it because yeah. that means their pockets get lined. You it's know, tenderpreneurship. Yeah, right, it's you know? great. Anyway, yeah, just uh, it's food for thought over there. Yeah, is that the end of what's new? Looks it like is, it. Yeah. So let's move into. I guess it'll be Wu Mao Corner next. Woo. Do we have anything for Wumao Corner we today? Do. We do. Okay, great. Let's take a look. Well, who's the biggest Wumao? Is the Chinese government, right? Wumao being paid internet troll. Yeah. Uh, this is big news. And this is kind of scary because I don't what think you it? guys you guys might remember. Uh, some of you might remember if you follow this kind of stuff. But the, when the CIA director called the invasion of Ukraine... Mm -hmm. And Russia was saying, no, absolutely not. We're just building up troops for blah, blah, all these kind of reasons, right? And their mm -hmm. CIA director's like, no, they're going to invade. A lot of media, a lot of even American media went around saying, nah, nah. The Russia said they're not gonna, right? Yeah. This is all fantasy. Bam. It happened. Lickety split invasion, right? Right. When the CIA director comes out, which is, they don't usually say things in public, like big statements, right? When they're saying that Xi Jinping has ordered its military to be ready to invade Taiwan in 2027. Yeah. That's a different story. So yeah. we're looking at, um, you know, is, you know, geo geopolitics wise, if you're looking at anything, you look at China and you're saying they're making calculations based on how Russia's doing in Ukraine, which yeah. is very poorly, right? Mm -hmm. They are looking at that and they're saying, well, this didn't go as planned. Although the invasion of Taiwan is very different, we can look at something going not the way it's supposed to be going and kind of learn something from well, that. Well, dude, I mean, let's just rewind a little bit here. Yeah. Just before the invasion of Ukraine, we saw that huge military yes. buildup as yeah. if they were going to invade yes. Taiwan, remember? And, and they were waiting for it. Then yeah. when they saw how badly Russia failed, yes. that it's they were going to take it over in a week, Look, right? Like two a weeks. Off, right? They're going to wait just like just that. Two, yeah. yeah. Or like three days or whatever they said. They definitely won't concede territory back. <laughs> no. Yeah. They were like, we're just going to take it over. Yeah. And, and China bought that yes. because, you know, they're close allies with uh, Russia. And they were yeah. like, good. Let let them go first, a little mm. test, and if they do well, like they said they would, then we'll do it. It's a very CCP thing to do, by yeah, the way. Yeah. Like let other people fuck it up more or less. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> and yeah. then, like we'll see. And then that it didn't work out for yes. Russia, and so they're like, no, it's, oh, it's been okay, a failure. Let's put the brakes on that for a little bit here. But the issue is, is that despite this, but despite these calculations, mm -hmm. um, it looks like they are maintaining momentum to go forward sure. with it, right? Mm -hmm. So. 
Uh, unfortunately, we might be oh. looking at, and, and that doesn't mean they're going to invade in 2027, by the way. Yeah, it could but be that's, sooner, it could be later. It could be later, but it, it means military ready by that time. Sure. Right. So it's not off the table is what I'm trying to say. We're not looking at a situation where it's absolutely not going to happen. Yeah. Right? This, it's, it's never it's really bad. been off the table. No, but there's been situations where you can look at it and be like, this is posturing. It, yeah. is, it is now becoming less posturing and more of a reality. Sure. It's just something to pay attention Americans. to. Americans. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Uh, so this is Wumab. Personal interest story, yeah. Okay, we're just going to play this out? Uh, or we're just going to explain it? I will just explain it. Okay. Yeah, maybe just turn the volume down. Yeah, I'll turn the volume off here. Um, basically, what happened was this guy is an American guy, right? Yeah. Goes Harrison to China. Lee? Yeah, goes to China for just to travel. Yeah. 2016. Gets freaking nabbed. Yeah. And then charged for 10 years by Beijing for espionage, right? No history of doing anything like this kind of yeah, stuff. Yeah, right? wasn't he? He's been stuck in China for six years, isn't it? Uh, since twenty sixteen. So okay, yeah, but about. then they're only now charging him with espionage. Ten, yeah, correct? for the ten years thing, and that's what China does: is they hold people indiscriminately, right? I wonder if this is in response to these recent um, arrests and uh, charges against actual like that big MSS spy. You know what so? the crazy thing is? The scary thing. Mm-hmm. You're, you're. I mean, we can't make any assumptions like that, but what we can do is, in, is Think about our friend. Yeah, Michael. Right? Our friend ended up as a political pawn. Yeah, Canadian Michael. Canadian Michael in political prison with no history of espionage. espionage. Yeah. We knew him. Yes. He was not a spy. He was not literally a, a, a tour guide. Yes. Right? For North Korean tours, right? Yeah. And ends up as a political pawn in political prison in China mm-hmm. for retaliation on Canada and the U.S.'s treatment of Huawei, the tech yeah, company Meng that always bring up. Oh, letting her live in a mansion. Right. Oh, God forbid, right? So <laughs> this is very CCP. Mm. Yes. Is they'll take someone that's completely unrelated to something. It'll be a tourist. It can be a, a freaking exchange student. Yeah. Slapping with drug charges, right? Yeah. All students like to do drugs, right? That's sure. What, you, know, you take a, uh, what's it called? You take a, someone that's lived there for a while. As long as they're a foreign citizen of the country that they hate at the moment, yeah. you're a potential target. And this yes. is what we probably saw here, right? So uh, this this uh, guy's son, again, both American citizens, trying to get him home. Right? Sure. Um, so then the U.S. made a response and... Hopefully, it would have been part of Blinken's mission. To well, that's the whole back. reason that this interest story came yeah. out now is because uh, Blinken was going to bring it up. Yes, and try to get like secure the release of correct um, of this American citizen that's detained in China. It's bullshit. You can't take an American and chuck him in jail for absolutely no reason on trumped up charges that don't exist in retaliation for your spies getting caught, your legitimate spies, Actual spies that have been proven in court with a jury Yes, of doing those things. Correct. Right, that's the difference. There is, I think people really get China mixed up. They really think it's probably just an Asian version of the US with a judicial system. Mm. China doesn't have a judicial system. There's no, no. rule of law. No. It's whoever, It's everything's a political calculation. Correct. There's no jury, nope. right? So I just want people to understand that. It's keep that in mind when you're, Going to China and dealing with China, you can't put it in the same lens as the U.S. Right? No, you, you don't can't. have the same rights. No, you absolutely can't. You know that that's something that um, I need to just remind everybody. You know, I was actually reading a thing. Somebody was um, asking advice on Reddit about um, sending his kid to China with his wife to yeah. go visit. He was yeah. asking like. Is it risky or whatever? Yeah. Um, and I gave the following advice, and this is advice that I'll give anybody who's in that kind of situation. If you're going to send your family over to China, he's got a Chinese wife. So if you've got a Chinese husband, Chinese wife, doesn't matter. Um, and you've got a child, and the child is a, a citizen of your own country. Yes. You're, you're going to be totally fine as long as you have a good relationship with your spouse mm. and your in-laws. Mm. Because... Let's just say you send your kid over um, with your wife or with your husband and she goes to go visit in-laws and they decide for whatever reason that they want the kid to stay there. Mm-hmm. You know, they want the child to stay in China. You're screwed. Yep. You cannot gain access to your child ever again. No. You can't because they. it's very easy to, if your child is like half Chinese or whatever, yeah. it's very easy for them to um, make that child a Chinese citizen. Yep. It's super simple. And you have no rights. There's no like paternal rights. Like yep. if you're a foreigner, you can't be like, oh, you know, that's my child and, you know, you know, I want my child to come mm. back out. We saw what happened with that horrible case with a guy who got stabbed by his ex-wife, yeah. remember? Yeah. Um, and his kids ended up being one of them stranded in China and it was a yeah. huge thing. Yeah. Um, just remember that the laws in China don't work like what you used to. Yeah. 
So the whole idea, like I was just using the, the child situation as an example. Obviously, I'm sure he'll be fine. But it's like, but I mean, the, the, you, you have no right. This guy's a yeah. good example of just going to, to going to travel. Yeah. And then nabbed out of convenience. Obviously, the chances are low. Yeah. But the Chinese government can decide whatever they want to do. Yeah. Right. Absolutely. And then you, as a citizen of another country, have no rights in China. No. And so there, there's no legal recourse. Nope. Is what I'm trying to get at here. No. I just use that that the kid thing as an example. But it's a it's a horrible, horrible situation. And you will find out exactly how powerless you are in China once you have to actually deal with the law. Yeah, that's a good point. That's and good before point. that, you think everything's fine. You know. Yes. So unfortunately for that particular family, that's going to be on hold. Uh, hopefully that that gets resolved. I'm we're we're pushing for him too. Yeah. Um, anyway, that's that's the end of that. So let's move on to um, the next thing, which is very important. Super important. And Guys, something yeah. happens on Mondays. It's a very important thing that happens on Mondays. Super important. Okay. What is it? I missed that first part, which is very important. Oh, yeah, I did. And uh, you know what? I also don't have audio on, so I'll probably go uh, back. Probably, yeah. Let's just restart uh, that. <laughs> okay, so something very important happens on Mondays, guys. Are you ready for it? Here it goes. <laughs> Today, we're going to be talking about fake alcohol, booze. Alcohol, yeah. Fake alcohol. Fake. It's obviously fake. Fake, fake alcohol. alcohol. Fake. Fake by Joe. Fake. He'd bring out the fake stuff. Renal failure. Puking all over the lobby. Permanent brain damage. Go yeah. to the bathroom and puke. L liver toxicity. F love making fake black label. This yeah. is not just normal alcohol. 30% of alcohol in China is fake. Which is stupid. I woke up the next day at 6 a.m. in the road. Puking all over the lobby. So don't waste a drop. Nothing is sacred. Bro, this is China, man. Yeah. Mirror. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so that was our Monday show, which is called Shaban Ho. It's our VIP club. We would love for you to join us if you have the means. Head on over to patreon.com forward slash ADV podcasts. You can join the Shaban Ho tier and gain access to all the previous episodes and, of course, catch us live on Mondays. And what is Shaban Ho? Shaban Ho is an entirely different show. It's not yeah. a little Q&A, fun little session. It's a full-on topic. It's with not a &A. supplemental. It's, it's not its own supplemental. Thing. And it's all the stuff we can't show on YouTube. There's stuff that we can't show on the show. We cover serious topics, news. We try to have fun here on the show, too. But there's yeah. certain things that we can't touch. Correct. And that is what we cover on Shaban Ho. So I highly recommend you go check it out. Not only is it live every Monday, you get access to every single previous episode we're up to 31 now yeah um every single monday never skip the beat so again go to patreon.com slash adv podcasts join at the uh, shaban ho tier if you can obviously mm -hmm. um and even if you don't want that access to that episode on monday every tier of the patreon gets you access to our discord and our right. discord is where we're hanging out we're sharing memes mm -hmm. we go in there to chat with you guys sometimes it's fun yeah super fun stuff. hey we really hope we can see you there on monday it's yeah. our favorite part of the week uh anyway it's time for us to move on to world view where we talk about everything in the world specifically with regards to china and what do you have over here for us to look at i remember you were talking about um mm -hmm. tata motors which is the indian yes company mm -hmm. um, and you said tata indica which we thought was fun because indica is a type of weed <laughs> so it looks like a weed truck somebody made. I didn't make this. No, like, there's oh. definitely no, dude. Look, I believe you. It's a uh, Tata yeah. Indica. I, I believe it's a real it. thing. I understand. Okay. People made a joke out of it. Oh, okay, all right. Um, Tata Indica versus Tata India. <laughs> okay, um, yeah, it's some sort of weed van. Right? Oh, okay. That's anyway, some, some interesting world news over there. I'll tell you that much. It's in worldly. It's very worldly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is good news. Yeah. So you know about these clandestine police stations that China's been operating around the whole world for years? Yes. Well, the one in Manhattan, anyway, has closed down. Yes. Isn't that good news? <laughs> I'd bye hope bye. so. I would hope bloody so. <laughs> yeah. I mean, After the FBI too. raided it. <laughs> yeah. Well, the FBI is going to raid it and say, okay, you can stay you open. Carry on. Carry yeah. on spy operation that yeah. targets Chinese dissidents. Yeah. Carry on. I mean, anyway, that's positive. We, we hope to see lots of these closing down. A, a bunch in Europe have closed down now. Good. Um, obviously, they're going to scramble and figure something else out, but we got to keep wasting their money and time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> keep them on the run, right? Absolutely. Uh, ridiculous, ridiculous. Um, big, big story out of Australia. You're the Australia expert. Go ahead. Yeah, well, I mean, we all know Australia kind of belongs to China. But no, quite seriously, this is huge. A uh, massive money laundering ring has been busted uh, in Australia. Huge. And to $10 billion worth or something? It was a huge, like hundreds, yeah, yeah, hundreds, it was like, I got it, I got it. You got to bring up the actual amount. But basically, um, they were operating a, uh, operating a shadow bank 
um, kind of operation yeah. in China. And they were money laundering for corrupt officials in China, 10 criminals. Billion. 10 billion. Yeah. $10 billion worth. Um, and of course, operating through casinos and the yeah. usual thing, like what they do in Canada. By the way, Canada, it's your turn to bust the crime rings because it's bigger in Canada. Yeah, it is bigger it's than It's way Australia. bigger yeah. in Canada. Like, it's been like that for decades it's wild, now. dude, especially uh, uh, Vancouver area. Yeah. yeah, through the casinos and whatnot. Yep. There. You know it's happening in Canada. Stop. I know you're still like, oh, good, it's good for the economy or something. Stop. Go bust these guys. So anyway, there is, a, there is something that I would like to just talk about when it comes to this because... One of the ways that these money laundering operations work is they buy up real estate. Yep. Okay. Now, you might think, okay, whatever, they're buying up real estate. But no, there are certain areas in the world right now where it's just absurd. Yeah. Like Vancouver is a good yeah. example. Where a house that's probably should cost like, I don't know, $50,000 costs $3.8 million. Yes. Okay, certain neighborhoods are just not possible for the average person, the average citizen of that country to ever right. afford to live in. And the reason is, is because these organized crime rings running out of China, getting all of the dirty money from the corrupt officials and from criminals and so on. CCP. Yeah, are buying up all the real estate and driving the prices up and destroying neighborhoods. These criminal organizations are having a knock-on effect that affect you yep. and affect your family and affect the the ability of your children to be able to afford housing and so on and so forth. And that's why it's so important for these Chinese organized crime rings to be busted and bought. I mean, they're literally funded by the Chinese yeah. government. I mean, they are. That's how you can hone in. You yeah. know what I mean? Okay, I'll just um, read the key points here. Australian federal police have charged nine people after smashing an alleged Chinese-Australian money laundering syndicate. The group alleged, allegedly moved an estimated $10 billion out of Australia while amassing a blue-trip property portfolio in Sydney. Police have seized properties and luxury assets worth at least $150 million. Two of the charged suspects are allegedly Chinese-Australian gangsters in Sydney with a combined personal fortune estimate of over $1 billion. The pair are accused of accumulating wealth by becoming uh, the Australian-based bankers of choice for international yes. drug cartels and wealthy Chinese nationals seeking to circumvent China's capital flight laws. I mean, the, how did that even get to that point? It's ridiculous. I mean, they were buying, they bought up like a huge swath of land near yeah. Sydney's second international airport. Yes. Massive, like yeah. 300 hectares or whatever yeah. it was, like a huge piece of land. Huge. They're buying up the local land, they're buying up the local real estate, and they're yeah. using this basically to... Uh, launder money and they're yep. driving around in the fanciest cars with stupid you know st watches that cost like millions of dollars or whatever you know just stupid stuff like that anyway huge bust it is a huge bust and um it's something that quite honestly you need to look into canada australia's struck first it's your chance it's your chance to do it you can you do redeem it redeem yourself canada it's <laughs> do it do We're it waiting. for everyone. Yes. Do it. You know what? Do it mostly for the marginalized Chinese immigrants that ran away from China that and now feel hard. threatened because yes. they can't afford a house mm -hmm. and they get targeted by CCP agents. And they've got the bloody there. Chinese yeah. mafia on their back on their doorstep. Back doorstep. You know? Deal with it. Deal with it. Dismantle this smuggling ring. Dismantle yeah. this CCP money laundering uh, you know, Ridiculous. enterprise, this international thing. Get rid of it. Canada, it's your turn. Anyway. Okay. Um so uh, a little follow up on my on my video of the mm -hmm. uh, you know what happened after the protests. We know that potentially thousands and thousands of protesters were disappeared. Reached out to a lot of people, couldn't get a hold of anyone that we knew joined the protest. This was yeah. a public one that people wanted to put the feelers out because she had a lot of influence, right? Yeah. Uh, disappeared white paper protester Ho Jin Yi. She called for her colleagues to go to Liang Ma Bridge in Beijing to protest and spread uh, many posters. She was working at KPMG at the time. Please spread out, put on the international press pressure on the police. Mm -hmm. um, she had studied abroad, um, so there is one that we can uh, that people are calling for political pressure. Uh, yeah, so she's she's like, another she's disappeared. Alive. Yeah, we need we need one proof. of many many yeah, many many. Of many. course. So here's another one that's gone missing. Yep. Just keep your eyes out. Yeah. Um, and I think that is. Oh, this is insane. Oh yes, yeah, yeah. <laughs> please, please enlighten everyone. <laughs> this is insane. Um, the conversation doesn't really matter here, but basically, all well, it says, everyone, look, I found something big. Mm -hmm. But the reason that this is so interesting is down below, you see where the circle is? Yes. The comment there says, like, um, if you have a, a country, then you have a home. And yes. that's that's like Chinese, typical yeah. Chinese banner propaganda. Yeah. 
Um, and it call, the, the person's calling the person a traitor. Yes. Right? So he says, 汉奸门, uh, So that means like, yeah, you, again, if you have, yeah, it's mm-hmm. if you have a, a country, then you have a home. And it's, it's like this kind of Xi Jinping type propaganda, right? Mm-hmm. Actually, it's been around since Mao's time. But anyway, the whole point of this is not the conversation. Yes. The whole point is this is a Wu Mao, right? Yes. And it's a Wu Mao that is obviously participating in a Weibo conversation to steer the conversation and make people gang up on the supposed traitor. Sure. Right? Someone that's sure. maybe saying something negative about the CCP. Yeah. Now, why would I point out a Wu Mao like this? Well, it was a very, very important feature of this Yeah, the conversation. location. It's the location, which says Shenyang City, mm-hmm. right? And then it says Lao Gai Nong Chang, which is literally a forced labor reform camp. Yep. And this is what they do. When you're talking to a Wu Mao or a paid internet troll that's sticking up for the CCP or trying to steer conversation away from criticizing it, you are potentially many times talking to somebody in a prison in a forced labor camp. And this is the work they have to do in the yes. prison. Yes. Like they're reformed. They're being forced to go. Probably should have turned off the location. Yeah, exactly. CCP, if you're going to force your prisoners. You know. I mean, it, there's, there's a wide network of these internet trolls. You know, the kind of people that attack us on Twitter and yep. leave nasty comments down below, even yep. in our live chat right now. Yep. Um, first of all, you get the volunteer yeah. nationalists who are just super natu- nationalists, ultra nationalists. They'll do anything to defend the honor of China and sure. the CCP. You get them. Then you get the paid ones that actually work for the Chinese government. They sit or, in an or office. Or not paid. Yeah, or yeah. not paid. No, I'm saying you get the paid ones that actually yes. sit in an office and they've yes. got their equipment and they've been given their directive to do this and they get a salary. Yeah. And then you get the forced labor ones yeah. like this dude <laughs> this who basically are in prison being told yeah. like instead of like, I don't know, breaking rocks with a with a sledgehammer. Which they do. Yeah, they do that too. But instead of that kind of hard labor, they sit there and they have to like leave patriotic comments on yep. The, online. Yep. Cut out, guys. Cut it's ridiculous. Out. Forced labor internet trolls. What a time to be alive. I know, right? <laughs> anyway. Yeah. yeah. Don't, don't feed the trolls is something they take literally over there. Feed them with food. No, no, they don't feed them because they starve they them. They don't feed them. They give them a few grains of rice. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> anyway, okay. Absolutely ridiculous. Yeah. It's time for us guys to hit our Q&A, which is called Yamcha. This is where we answer your super chats. We answer your questions and you question our answers. And I get to loosen my tie. We get to relax. Just chill out. It's Friday after all. Uh, so those of you who are not watching live or on the weekend, we do cut it out of the show. I heard um, that you got to get down on Friday. You got to get down? Everybody working for the weekend, something yeah. like that, Friday, Friday. No, everybody's working for the weekend. No, everybody looking forward to the weekend. It's oh. Friday, Friday, got to get down on Friday. I don't know that song. You Don't Know Friday by Rebecca Black. No, I don't. It's Friday, Friday. <laughs> One of the worst songs ever made. Oh, Classic. yeah, yeah. That, that, I've heard, I've 